Mr. Roberos. Delighted to meet you, sir. Your letter of credit has been uh, processed and uh, all is in order. And I'm the manager here. We have your letter of credit and I just require your signature, sir. And of course, your passport, Mr. Roberos. There is 23,000. I counted it myself. But of course, oh, please, thank you for your help. Delighted, Mr. Ribeiros. Tell me. Yes? Is it a good fishing off the coast of Venezuela? It's, it's my hobby. My dear sir, it is mine also. As you can see, of eight identical photos, one from each bank, which this Dago and one of his eight manifestations turned over. Well, they all look like a cross between Viva Zapata and Sammy Davis Jr. With a touch of Errol Flynn from the Prisoner of Zender. Uh, no, wasn't that Douglas Fairbanks? No, none of them looks like Douglas Fairbanks. If the Film Society can delay further comment until playtime. <clears throat> Sorry, sir. No. The evil bloody genius that worked out this caper was obviously cunning. That tends to be the problem with evil bloody geniuses. He was cunning because he was not greedy. You reckon he wasn't greedy? What's eight times 23,000? 184 grand. What? Under 25,000 in each police region. And Chummy reckon, probably quite rightly, that police manpower is more heavily deployed for thefts over 25. Ah, but he didn't reckon with the intercity squad, did he? Exactly the kind of caper the squad was designed for. Harry, don't forget we need butter. And pears. We're out of pears. What? Pears, Harry, we're right out. Fine. And what will you two be doing? we better tidy up if you're bringing speed back tomorrow. OK, I'll get the pears. Good girl. And the butter. Don't forget we need butter. See you, girls. So you're set on him. <laughs> My people like the cut of his jib. Quite brilliant, by all accounts. Too bloody brilliant for your motley crew. Damn. Now, what you said when they inquired about me, Alan. You would never have made the treasury, my dear. Well, in any case, we intend to approach the subject fairly soon. Perhaps even this weekend. Well, I dare say the ground's been prepared. Doesn't the fact that he's living with two girls go against him? Oh, we'd rather live with 12 women than one boy. You know what the office is like. I wonder if Guy Burgess knew what harm he did to the job prospects of the sexual deviate. Uh -huh. Have one of these? No, thank you very much. That's never going to kindle in this weather. <laughs> The letters of credit and the forged head office memoranda were routinely queried by each of the eight banks involved, using our own computer interrogation procedure. At which point the computer, uh, Charlie, should have said no way or whatever computers say when they mean thumbs down. Dead right. But this time he let you down. Naughty Charlie. Oh, no, you cannot blame Charlie for that, man. Someone intercepted the link between the banks and this computer. Exactly. Now, according to our own investigators, the person that cut out Charlie without ringing his bells and flashing his lights calmly handled each query as it came in, plus arranging for queries from each of our any other 600 branches to be dealt with normally. He then reconnected the system. He has to be a bloody genius, man. Were any signs of a break-in? No, but the boffins tell us you wouldn't even need to be inside the building to pull this trick. Good God, why? Well, they wouldn't tell us. It's top secret. But presumably Chummy's in on the secret. Oh, aye. Uh, yes? You got time for a drink, Pet? It's after one o'clock. Let's wait till we catch him. Oh, some hopes. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Burgess. 
Never had anything like that at Oxford, did we, Alan? You can't be serious. Professor, you, uh, you asked me to tea? Of course I asked you to bloody tea, Harry. Um, Bill here wonders what your plans are when you get your degree. How refreshing to hear the direct approach is impinged upon these bell swarmed towers. bell swarmed. What are your plans? Providing your examiners are kind to you. I don't know. Certain parties have inferred that a fellowship may be possible. Also, there's Harvard, the new postgraduate program. Why? What are you offering, Mr. Dugdale? But well, it really depends. Let us just say perhaps we should um, chat over the weekend. <laughs> so much for the direct approach, eh? That crab face ruddy right, cosmos done it again. What's that, Chief? Land us with a case that nobody else has touched with a barge pole. That grass last week, what did we pay? What grass? You know, the one he, he was, he Brexit was... report on the letters of credit. The quality of photograph here indicates someone with access to a highly professional piece of kit, like a printer who specialises in facsimile editions of rare books. Yeah, and... Well, I've done an analysis on the different clothes and accessories worn by the eight con men. Yeah, and... Well, this might sound very silly. But uh, you don't think so? Well, the thing is, Sarge, it's as if they were costumed for the part. Costumed? Yeah, theatrical, amateur dramatics. Upon my soul. Rare books, amateur theatricals. Yeah, 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 what else? There's more? Yeah, shut it, Willis. I'm, I'm trying to make a connection. It's not that Red Indian sign again, is it? Rare books, amateur theatricals. Dear, oh dear, there is a connection in there somewhere, I know it, yeah? Uh, fibres, from the lower left quarters of five of the eight letters. Tweed? Wool. Colour? Oh, magic, magic. This is the stuff of detection, Willis. White and, um, blue. Light blue or dark blue? Dark blue. Cambridge. Cambridge, Gov. Yeah. Come on, Sarge. Isn't that pushing your intuition just a bit too far? Waterway Police Up North attended a fatality last Tuesday night. He was carrying three grand in my kind of lolly. Uh, your kind of lolly, sir? Scots. Pictures of Robert Burns on it. He had uh, he'd a scrap of paper with the address of that Edinburgh bank, some phrases in Venezuelan Spanish, mm -hmm. and a telephone number in Oxford. Oxford? Public call box in one of the colleges. A bright young traffic cop passed it on to CID. Now, that's what I call a lucky break, eh? Yeah. Uh, Gov, you don't happen to know the, uh, the colour of Oxford, do you know the uh, boat race? Dark blue. Well, I tell you, boat race. Hardly what I expected, Derek. Leading a bunch of yobbos. Only on pants instead of skateboards. Oh, they look like decent kids to me. Transistor radios, floating discotheques, punt rockers. What did you expect? Oscar Wilde with a ukulele? I don't know. You know, I'm doing this open university course. Are you still on that? Sometimes when I'm locked in my room, I'd like to imagine that I'm, I'm really in some attic, in Balliol, or Maudlin. No, a uh, candle flickering, port in the library, gowns billowing in the, in the, in the quad, contributing a sceptical Alexandrian parody to Isis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Touch of the wall turn all of us, I suppose. Raleigh? No, Mitty, my son. Well, let's go and solve some crime. And get rid of that bloody silly hat, will you? Ah! Willis! 
You owe me half a quid, Willis. What for? You owe me half a quid, Willis. You know what for. Yeah, all right. Just because you bought new gloves and you didn't want to get them wet. That's why you got the ump. You drove that punt into the bank on purpose. Turkish Delight cost a quid a box. I spilt half of it. You owe me half a quid. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll give you the half a quid when I do me exit. Anyway, you shouldn't be eating Turkish Delight. It's bad for you, especially at your age. You still owe me half a quid, Willis. <sighs> you see anyone that looks like our local contact? Can't say as I do, Sarge. George, call me George. Sorry, George. Anyway, we're a few minutes early. Yeah, let's take a pew. Dogs is barking, Georgie boy. George will do, Willis. You're all soft these days, you young blood. You can't drive punts, it's all... Uh, you, uh, you got the right table, Squire. Two pints Congo Cola. So, Vanessa told me on the blower. Ah. Job? Boo Haggard, RCS. Royal College of Surgeons. Regional Crime Squad, Pillock. Great, so you're our meat. How do you know Vanessa? A fast driver. She and I took the course together. Ah, and now you're on two wheels. Well, I find it easy to get about. Now, uh, I've got all the bump you asked for. Yeah. Plus, I've seen Professor Keith, and he's arranged for you to have a room in the college where that um, dog and bone is. Oh, great. It'll be at this address today. He plays in the Music Society. Uh, nice little hotel near the local Nick I booked you into, uh, through a travel agent, so you can be anything you like. Oh, great. So Now, uh, I suggest you use uh, bikes, pedal, to get around on. I've arranged a corner in the local Nick, should you need it. CID are decent blokes. They'll give you all the help you want, provided you play it straight. I'm very impressed. We're not used to this level of cooperation. Oh, I had the same problems when RCS first started. Uh, personally, I'm all in favour of a national CID squad. I think you blokes deserve all the help you can get. You, uh, you're the same Bullman got shot up in Manchester. The very same. Fully recovered? You should see me now. <laughs> hmm. Vanessa? Casualties report for what it's worth. Oh, what happened? Oh, they reckon he had a heart attack at the wheel. People in the other car were dead lucky. Uh, effects? Well, here's a list. Nottingham CID sent them down for you. Right, what have I got? Name, address, union ticket, driver's license, blood donor's card. N OK? Attached to the back. Been informed? Yes, uniform. Apparently he was in the darts team at the pub frequented by the local Nick. Nice, quiet bloke. No villain. This is his wife? Well, I understand it's his mother. Right. Well, I think I'll take a trip up there, pay her a visit. No, I'll check with the local Nick first. Don't want to step in any toes. I don't reckon on showing out there, Tom. There's no point in letting Chummy know there's CID interest. Hi. Oh, I'm, uh, I understand that Professor Keith, uh, that, that's that... him inside on the base vial. Huh? A base vial. It's a sort of early English cello. I'm Harry yeah, Drone. Uh, oh, um, uh, my Bullman, name's... Bullman, George, Open University. Yeah. You've come down here on your week's vacation to boost your philosophy studies yeah. and a mutual friend has arranged for speed to help you. Speed? Uh, Professor Keith. He said you'd be round. Oh, uh... Well, you got it in one, Harry. <laughs> well, I must say, this is all very, very nice indeed, all this. My mother bought it when she was up here. 1951. Piece of luck, really. Yeah, it must be worth a fortune. Hmm? 
Money. Oh, that. I'm never sure with Holborn, Kate, whether it's more enjoyable to play him the way he intended or with a degree of, dare I say it, syncopation. Syncopated Holborn? Really, Professor, what would the purists say? They can say what they like. Hello, I'm Alan Keith. Welcome. Uh, George Bournemouth, sir. Well, that was uh, very agreeable to listen to, and it must have been even more fun to play. Ah, there speaks a musician, I believe. Uh, no, no. What do you play, George? Those hands. Piano, without a doubt. <laughs> no. Come along, Mr Bullman. Please sit down and play for us. Uh, no, I just... Uh, uh, smokers, you know. Uh, Around the old Joanna, nothing... Um, uh, nothing formal, like, like what you were doing. Oh, come on, don't be shy. Uh, I do believe I detect a devotee of Mr Smith. <laughs> Wooden top. Yeah. Pine tops. <laughs> of course. Please. Oh, this will be a treat. Well, if you're uh, sure you don't mind. Please, please, oh, no. please. <laughs> Sugar, Miss Clark. Uh, one, please. Now, I, I'm really here to get some details, and De I... Details? About the accident. About the crash? About... Thank you. About Robert, really. Oh. It's the company. They, they've asked me to get um, one or two details. I see. Look, if, if you'd rather I came back, I, I mean, you must be very upset. I had two boys, you know. Bob and Andrew. Andrew was the youngest. He was a pilot, fleet air arm. Fine boy. It was very rare, they said. Caught in a wire or something, flipped over the side. Cockpit canopy jammed. He was cracking jokes. I'm so sorry. Cracking jokes. Then it sank. Look, I'll come back. No, no, no. And Robert? Oh, he was a fine man. Quiet. Unfulfilled till just recently, and then suddenly it, a new lease of life, really. But, oh, but you don't want to. No, no, please. I'd like to hear. Mm. How good it is to be here. Cuckoo echoed cloisters. Bell swarmed, lark charmed, rook racked, river rounded. Gerald Manley Hopkins. Mm -hmm. My dear Bullman, you surprised me. <laughs> ah, well, this open university business, Professor, it's not just a cover, you know. <laughs> You're actually doing the course? Ah, yes, these past five years. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. How many degrees do you have? Well, well unfortunately, uh, as yet, Professor, the uh, scheduling of my examinations has not coincided with the apportionment of leave accorded to me by my superiors. So, what exactly are you after, Sergeant? Well, uh, clutching at straws, really, Professor. Uh, somebody, a genius, if you like, has organised a highly imaginative rip-off. Uh, that is to say, a fraud. Yes, we know about rip-offs down here. Banks, sir. Eight different branches of the same bank. Eight men present themselves at exactly the same time with identical letters of credit and walk off with eight times 23,000. What about security? Uh, sure. Oh, computer, sir. Intercepted, counterfeited, in short... Uh, a rip-off. <laughs> Why here, at this college? Closer. Point to the brains being um, having access to a dog and bone to, to a telephone, sir. To the history department's payphone. A member of my faculty? Hmm. Or a student. Tell me about the bright ones, Professor. The very bright ones. A tragic motorway accident. I've arranged for his mother to be provided for. Isn't that asking for trouble? Not at all. 
I've simply increased the monthly payout due through Horace's legitimate life policy. The computer was most obliging. I haven't enjoyed myself so much in my life. I know. What's next on the menu? It's something quite entertaining and very, very cheeky. Furthering my education, Mr. Dugdale. How's life at the Ministry of Accidents? Oh, tolerable. Well, you're bound to learn a great deal from the current faculty list. What are you studying? University administration. It's always a pleasure to see you, sir. Mr. Fairfax still at the Treasury, is he? So I understand. Sergeant, I live in what we call the Fellows' Rooms. Do pop in for a single malt. Ah, oh, thanks. What number? Uh, number 18. We're neighbours. What? Neighbours, sir. I'm in 21, just down the passageway. They're bloody drafty, aren't they? Anyway, I've found somewhere to plug in my frying pan, so we're all right for bangers and bacon. Good God in heaven. Good night. You look a bit lonely. Others gone off, have they? Yes, gone up to Oxford, reading How to Catch Villains. Great. Now's my chance. What for? Spot of dinner. Finally got an American Express. What have we got, Vanessa? Well, sir, several months ago, the dead con man suddenly perked up. New lease of life. Down to what? Well, it seems a man started a phone. Homo. No. This was secretive. Secretive? She thought he joined the Masons. They used code names. Yeah. His was Horace. Chummy was Socrates. And? Well, I think it was this, this bloke from Oxford. Robert started to go away for a few days at a time, and he started keeping strange clothes in a suitcase on top of his wardrobe. Strange? Yes. Of course, his mother looked. Pervert. Transvestite. No. An airline pilot's uniform, an incredibly expensive grey suit, and language records, plus a dodgy Venezuelan passport. Quite a change from a quiet draper's clerk in the local dab scheme, eh? Yes. Sir? Yes? Now I've told you verbally, can I scrub the typed report till the morning? Well... There are several rare bookshops. And, of course, the famous University Press. Plus, there must be half a dozen publishers who could print a reasonable facsimile of, say, The Ballad of Reading Jail. Right, then, I'll take a ride round. Ah. Yeah? Retired station sergeant Fred Clayton lives in Juxon Street. Into printers? Into Oxford. Encyclopedia, walking type. Great. Cheers. Save your tyres. On your bike. Each malt has its own special flavour. And its own special headache next day. Since when did these chambers preach abstinence? Temperance, my old darling, is not to be equated with self-denial. Except to those lost forever on the voyage through Helen. What do you think about Jerome? In what respect? He's really too brilliant for you chaps. And yet... Hmm? And yet he has this erratic streak. Like those bizarre chamber music orgies? <laughs> Adventure, intrigue, and an undeniable arrogance. A love of the power over others your world thrives on. <laughs> I wish my world did have some power. <laughs> Dear boy, you have seen the reality. 
You have worked for the department. Ah, but I'm not talking about reality. You chaps have a love-hate relationship with the Daytons and the Carries and their world of make-believe. On the one hand, you're terrified in case they shine some light on the awful dullness of your activities. And on the other, you're quite thrilled at the massive PR job they've done on behalf of your image. I mean, for a start, the fictional spooks actually seem to know what the world is all about. Good God. What brought that on? <laughs> Migraine. Drop in barometric pressure. You know what Philby said about the carrier? Awfully entertaining as a work of fiction, but nothing like the real thing. Mm. Now, what will you sell to Jerome this weekend? The fiction or the real thing? Philby. We never had anything like that at Oxford, now did we, Alan? No scandal, no traitors. Not at old college. Must have been. That's what we think at the office. Is that why they took away a van load of administrative records last month? Oh, did they? Oh. Nobody tells me anything, you know. Alan, when you were an undergrad, hmm? what year was that? 37, 38. Oh, yes, 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 oh, yes. Must have been wonderful pre war. Europe still unspoiled by tourism and the EC. It was interesting. I was at Oberammergau and Bayreuth and Nuremberg. I saw Hitler address his Aryan hordes. Well, that must have set you against fascism forever. It set us all against fascism. Didn't we go to war? Oh, yes. Yeah. So we did. Rare books, Gov. Dozens of students. Hundreds. I mean, where to start? No leads at all. Well, I did find one lead. A bit iffy. Any chance of spitting it out and letting me in on the info? Bookshop called J. Baxter's. Also publishes facsimile editions of rare books. Ah, oh, like the Ballad of the Reading Jail. Suddenly everybody's on about this ballad of bleeding red in jail. What is it? Porno or something? Yeah, Burke. Out, Willis. Spit it out, I beg you. Back room is used by some student bloke for rehearsals. Amateur dramatics. But apparently they've been using the printing equipment. The boss didn't seem to mind because students get up to things like that. Pamphlets, you know. Yeah, yeah, and bank drafts. Magic. Name? Jerome. Harry Q. Jerome. He lives at... I know where he lives. Haven't I just been playing his ratty ops, he called? Small world, Skip. And then the war started, September 39. And you came up to Broadway? Well, that was later, June 1940. I started off in the army. Oh, yes, of course, yes. And who exactly was it recruited you? Can you remember? Why the questions, Bill? What's your problem? No problem, dear boy. Just that we have this thing going on. You know the department? Witch hunt. Never. Huh? We don't have time to rake over dead leaves. Like a spot of rain. I told you, the barometer's dropped. How's your head? Passing. It's passing now. It's but a rain, I felt it. Wind's freshening. Mm. So who was it recruited you? Reveal the door behind the mirror. It was Tommy. Oh, dear. None of us ever suspected, dear old Tommy. And when do you plan to put the question to Jerome? Soon enough. You know, I find that pre-war period fascinating. Now, 
Who was that miner's official who used to come to debates? I never think of the fellow's name. Back yet, Chief. Not to worry, my old son. You've got all the time in the world. Set a man up for the day. Porridge, egg, bacon, sausage. Oh, and the coffee. Freshly ground. Delicious. Leave it out, Gov. Have a good night, then, did we? I thought there was a bleeding backup due on at four. Ah, sorry about that. It wasn't rostered, and it's a bit difficult getting volunteers at that hour at night. Especially for a strange team. When did it drop off the first time? Gold knows. Twenty past six, I was still awake. Local copper tried to move me on. Anything till then? Movement? Not a sausage. Right, it's quarter past seven. They won't be up yet. Got the warrant? Yeah. Here. You, uh, you all right? Look a bit rough. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Right then. This is it. Lose that bloody hat! Yours or his? Mine. Harry doesn't need that. Better lose it before Haggard gets back. Go on. Yeah? Nothing. Well, ladies, where is he? Didn't come home last night. Maybe it's three time in you. Pigs. Is this what you do when you're not playing ragtime? Deceiving people? A boogie woogie, miss. <laughs> oh, that was boogie woogie. Christ, how old are you? When will you be back, Kate? Leave my sister alone. Kate, don't answer them. Now, let me see your ID. We do have a magistrate's warrant, miss. You have a legal duty to identify yourselves. Warrant cards, if you please. Of course. Derek, flash it to the young lady, will you? Oh, sexist. Well, what's this all about? What's Harry supposed to have done? Oh, now... Why do you presume that, that, that Mr. Jerome uh, is the object of our investigation? Because you asked where he is. Ah. My sister and I have done nothing criminal. Unless you think that two girls sharing one lover is an offence. Well, that weedy fiddler. Oh, he has got up in my estimation. Lucky man. Two attractive birds like you. Yeah, clever bloke. Clever? <laughs> He's brilliant. Do you know that Harry has an IQ of 162? Am I something are down here right now trying to recruit him? No. Good Lord. And you think he's a crook? Oh, Miss, I, I really am most terribly sorry. It looks like we've been given some duff info, isn't it? Could be, George. Yeah, you see, ladies, oh, we have to investigate all anonymous allegations, and somebody told us that you had vast amounts of heroin here. Heroin? Yes, I know. It's silly, really, isn't it? Just doing our job, girls. You can be a right bastard, Gov. A swift and nasty copper. Yes. 
I have certain standards. Ah. So what did you get? What, from Jerome's gaff? Receipt from Emerson the chemist, dated yesterday for £31.44. I'm not with you, Gov. What, do you think he's just stepped out for the night? Why not? No. He's a student living off the bleeding taxpayer. What makes you think he's coming back? Well, his gear's all there. Car keys, I notice. Check card. And in the bathroom, shaving gear, toothbrush, contact lens case. Right. Better put around the chemist and find out what he's bought. No sign of young Jerome. Hmm? I was rather hoping to have a chat with him this morning. He's working on the Hall Belisha thing. Oh. Try the library. I did. Still no sign. What the hell is Sergeant Bullman doing down here? You know him. I know him, dear boy. He's a bane of the CID, Oliver Cromwell of the Detective Force. Black is black, white is suspect, crime must be solved. No grace, no favor. He's investigating a computer fraud. Ah. Some link, apparently, with the department here. Ah. Still, it is a bit much he's living in, you know. Could he not sleep in a cell at the local police station? The chief constable asked me to help. It pays to have a good relationship. Ah. <clears throat> now, Alan, we were talking about this holiday of yours in Austria. Now, was that around the time that that... Uh, Philby married that communist girl? What, what was her name? Friedman. Let's say Friedman. Bill, mm -hmm. is this an interrogation? Is that why you're here? Oh, yes, dear boy. I'm afraid so. Um, G51374, stroke DIM. This is gentleman. Right. Um, orange six. Orange six. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Right. Blue sixteen. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sixteen. Right. White twenty four. Right. Green, 30. 30. Right. Never guess. So, what did he buy for thirty-one pounds forty-four? Shaving bag, razor, three packs of razor blades, shaving soap, shaving brush, flannel, shaving mirror, bottle of Lucasade, all sorts of vitamin pills, and a prescription from his doctor for Benzedrine, twenty tablets. So, what do you reckon? Had it around his toe skip. He's up to something. Plus, he's not planning on coming back. Otherwise, he'd have made an excuse for going over the side, right? Bloody hell. I wonder who's for the big con this time. I can't authorise a nationwide alert on Bullman's hunch. He has no evidence to support his theory. This Jerome might have nothing to do with the crimes we are snouting around. I trust Sergeant Bullman's judgment, sir. Well, hoist this in, Miss Bennett. We're a very new squad. We have a few coppers on our side, and hopefully more, as they see us get results. Now, I can't afford to start a manhunt, unless I know that the object of that hunt is worth the rest. Right, sir. Got that. You, uh, you wouldn't mind just logging that we did, in fact, make this request? Don't be bloody impertinent. You find yourself back in uniform. 
Yes, sir. Thank you very much. He's bloody doing it right now. I can hardly push the pedals, I'm so sure. Me giving you a jip, boss? Evidence. Crab-faced, ruddy Scotsman will make a good counsel for the defence. But as a practical rosary, he's dead naff. Bit hard, Chief. I mean, frankly, I don't quite have the old frame myself. The big picture. I'll give you the big bleeding picture, son. Harry Q. Jerome has gathered together a collection of total non-entities, drapers, clerks, cinema ushers, I don't doubt, out-of-work actors, and he's given them a reason for living. False passports, secret code names, disguises, split second timing. Oink. In a word, Willis, adventure. You reckon? I surely do, chump. And they're so ruddy grateful to him for brightening up their drab little lives that they'll never squeal. He's made them depend on him. And they love it. Clever bloke. Read that interview Vanessa had with the dead man's mum. It all fits. Yeah. But where is he now? Aye. There's the rub. Bill? No, no, not just now. Are you interrogating everyone connected with the Foreign Office at a certain time? Is that the idea? No. no. Not quite. I've been out for so long, out of the service. I haven't had access to secrets since 50... Uh, 51. Why did you leave in 51? This is my life, the college. I'm a history don, not a spy, my dear. But when you were with the, um, with us, you ran Mousetrap, didn't you? Don't play games. You clearly know the answer to that. We lost 16 people, Alan. Philby screwed Mousetrap, everyone knows that. Philby, we knew all about Philby since 41. Don't believe all you read in the newspapers. Games. It's all games. You betrayed Mousetrap, didn't you? You're mad. You used a postcard system, and a mobile transmitter was provided by a KGB illegal. We've known all about you, dear boy, since your fortnight in Austria with Arnold Deutsch. What nonsense. You would have picked me up years ago. Well, no point. You are a first-class channel of false information. You know what hurts. You didn't take a bloody penny from them. Dicey ground here, Skipper. Seeing as you've kind of blown your cover. You and reading too many comics. Oh. Yeah, the point is, Georgie, this professor bloke might not be too chuffed. You turned over his prize student's drum. Ah, uh, Professor Case, all right. He's not one of your older masks and pink old crawlers, you know.
wasted, Bill. A wasted life. Well, I should worry. You managed to waste quite a few others on the way. But all these years, the visits down here, the club, we've all been so close. Friends. Drunken evenings. The investiture at the palace. And all the time they knew. Ah, morning, gents. Hope I'm not interrupting. Only something important's just cropped up concerning this investigation of mine. Oh, sight of woman. Professor, do you know if uh, Harry Jerome, apropos of being a history student, had access to any kind of computer training? Woman. Sir. Computers, of course we have a computer. The vast amount of data available to a modern history department makes the use of a computer almost mandatory. And Jerome? Harry's a great asset. Volunteered last summer to go on a computer course. <laughs> With his IQ, he probably knows as much as they do about the subject. God and his angels protect your sacred throne. Oh, and... Uh... Make you long become it. Would any further passengers traveling on this flight please go immediately to gate number one? And listen to this. A letter to Jerome from United Computers to Michigan. With reference to your request for microcircuit data related to simple output to la to la, suitable for use in a telephone landline checkout. Derek, he's our man. Pop down the neck and put out a nationwide and Harry Q. Jerome. Six foot, 160 pounds, fair hair, Caucasian. Go. Shouldn't we check with the hangman? I'll speak to Lambie. Go. Roger, Chief. Sergeant Bullman, hmm? please come with me. What is the Sergeant, business? this is business. Well, well, Professor Keith, your public spirited assistance has been of great help. Fiat Justia Ruat Calum, I always say. Detective Sergeant Bowman, you are aware of my position in the government service. Of course. But I require you to enforce the law on my behalf. My pleasure, Mr. Will Dunno. you please put Professor Keith under arrest and escort him to Oxford Police Station where he will be charged under Section 1 of the Official Secrets Act? Report coming in from the city, sir. Repeat of the computer swindle, only this time the sum ripped off is closer to a million. Get Bullman back from Oxford. Liz, with fraud and serious crime. D.S. Yes, Bullman put out a nationwide on one Harry Q. Jerome at 3.05. He had no right. Well, it's academic, really, sir. S.B. Heathrow have just informed us that one Harry Q. Jerome was cleared through passport control on a flight to Caracas at 3.08 today. Do we have an extradition treaty with Venezuela, sir? Still don't know his hand. Of course not, sir. Damnation. So, we're never really interested in recruiting Jerome after all, sir. Good God, no. The man's a criminal. That soon became clear. You knew that? Of course. Didn't you? Would you care for some champagne, sir? Champagne? That would be nice. How much for a bottle? Oh, champagne is free to first-class travellers. Sir? Thank you. Problem? That's uh, just the old knee. Tends to play up from time to time. <laughs> 